It's our gift to a mom who's expecting a baby. When COVID hit, people stopped doing traditional baby showers. They didn't want to get together and, and have uh, big parties and gatherings. And so we had three women who were pregnant. And we had to figure out what, what are we going to do to support them and celebrate them and love them. And so we came up with this idea for what we call foyer baby showers. And so we set up a table and we decorate it and we run it for three Sundays in a row. And that way people from the church can, can bring their gifts and set them on the table. And we have a lady in the church. She's a caterer and a baker. And so every Sunday there's a treat at the table for the church people. And maybe that's a cupcake or, or chocolate dipped pretzels, or maybe it's a fruit kebab, but it, it's our way of a church, as a church to, to come together and to celebrate and support these uh, coming babies. Well, during COVID, we actually had four babies born. And the first three, they were born to couples who were married. And, and the fourth one was born to a couple who was living together. They're engaged and in this December, they're gonna get married. Then this past summer, we had another couple living together, not married, and they had a baby. And, and currently in our foyer, we have two of these tables set up. The other one's across the hall here. One is for a couple that's married and their baby's due next month. And the other one is for a couple that's not married and, and their baby came a little bit early and in fact was just born last week. When we did these foyer baby showers during COVID, the first three went over fine. They were great. The fourth one to the couple that wasn't married um, caused a little flack. I, I didn't even know it. Um, I had a couple leave kind of during that time. And I thought they had left for for one specific reason. And, and it was a year and a half later, I found out they left because of these full year baby showers, specifically for that one that we hosted for the unwed couple. You see, they thought that we shouldn't do that. They thought that we should only support married couples, and that we should dismiss girls who are pregnant, women who are pregnant and aren't married. I had a church member come to my office after they talked to that couple and found out that, that they left over this four-year baby shower for this unwed couple. And I said, yeah, we did host a, a baby shower for, for that couple. And, and no, they're not married. And, and we're going to host some others because there's some other girls who are, who are pregnant that, that aren't married. See, James 1.27, and I'm going to paraphrase this, says that true religion is to take care of, of widows and orphans. And I think under the umbrella of what James is writing, we need to take care of mamas and babies, whether they're married or unmarried. Jesus loves the little children. He said, and I'm paraphrasing, he said, let the little ones come unto me and do not hinder them. And if you hinder them, it's better if a millstone was strung around your neck and you were thrown into the depths of the sea. That's pretty harsh. I think when you look at what James wrote and, and when you look at what Jesus said about children, this is the right thing to do. There's this saying that the right thing is not always the popular thing, and that's even true in the church. Hosting these four-year baby showers for these seven babies that have been born these last couple of years, that's the right thing to do. I believe it's the biblical thing to do. It's the Christ thing to do. But it's not always popular with the church people. And, and it actually cost us a couple. They got mad over it and they left. The point to this morning's video is this. Do the right thing. Do the biblical thing. Do the godly thing. People aren't always going to agree with you. P people are going to get mad with you. People are going to get upset over you. They're going to talk negatively about you. They're going to gossip in the church about what the pastor said or what the pastor did. But you do the right thing. You do the godly thing. You do the thing that is biblically supported. You may lose families over it. But on judgment day, 
You need to look God in the eye and say, I followed your holy word. I did what your son Jesus would have done. I did the right thing. Keep your eyes wide open for the right thing and always do it. Hey, I love you. I love babies. And I love that our church is growing through our nursery. I'll see you next time.